Hello and welcome to DTWG the prep welcome. So in today's video we're going to be looking at um, GDMAT and square roots and cube roots. Okay, it's good you, you know about this, okay, because there are some questions, especially in the you know the five first questions, your no calculator sections, you see questions like this, exponents, um, integers, questions, order of operations, you know things like this you'll see. So it's always good you have an idea of uh, square roots and cube roots. Okay, so we're gonna be going through this questions and I'll be explaining square roots and cube roots. Okay, and uh, if this is your first time on this channel, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, uh, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones preparing for the GED test. And uh, you can check our website, dtwgdprep.com, for summary notes, study guides, uh, free practice questions on uh, your science, social studies. Uh, uh, very soon I'll be, yeah, I have some free practice questions on RLA. There, there is one on the, on the website. You can check that and practice with it, and I'll be uploading more for you. You can also join our Facebook group. We're over 22,000 members. And, uh, you know, if you have questions regarding the GED, uh, support, motiva motivation, you also get it in the group. Okay. And uh, I'll leave all links in the video description box of this video. If you also require one on one tutoring on math, science, social studies, RLA, whichever, um, you know, subject you're having difficulty in. Um, you know, contact me. I'll leave my email in the video description box of this video. All right, so let's get on to the video now. So we have square roots. So here, question one says, find the square root of nine. Now, let me let me quickly ask you this question. Now, when you see this, it says, find the square. of nine let me clean this find the square root of nine now look at these two questions they are completely different now you see questions like this in the word problem they might say the square of nine add added to maybe uh the quotient of a number you know the way what problems are these two questions are completely different. Find the square of nine. Find the square root of nine. Now, when you see square, square means nine raised to the power two. And nine raised to the power two is nine times nine. That is find the square of nine, which is 81. Now, find the square root of nine means this. Find the square root of nine. Okay, in maths, you just, you usually, we usually, you leave the square, okay, we don't, uh, the square root, we don't put two, you usually don't see it on your calculator, you don't see the two in front of it, okay, because um, this, the square root is the first square root, okay, then the next is cube root, fourth root, and all that, okay, there's no one root, okay, so find the square root of nine, now is different, the square root of nine here is three. So you can see these two statements are completely different. It's, you can also see, find the cube of nine and the cube root of nine. The cube of nine is nine raised to the power three, which is nine times nine times nine. And the cube root of nine is nine cube, okay, which will give us probably a decimal number, okay? so. Two different statements which you should take note of. All right. Now, getting back to our question, what is the square root of nine? As I said, it's three. How do you get the square root of nine? I think you you wonder how. Now, to get the square root of nine, you must get a number. Okay, that you can multiply twice. That would give us nine, and the number is usually smaller than this number here. So. 3, when you multiply 3 2 times, it gives us 9. 
So that's the square root of 9. 3. Are you with me? Okay. Now, when you have something like this, 3 times 3, which gives us 9. 9, we call 9 a perfect square because it gives us whole numbers, all right, that we can multiply. That gives us what? Uh, uh, nine okay you are well i'm i'm going to show you there are going to be some examples where you, we encounter non-perfect squares okay and you see that our answers are usually in decimal points okay o also when we punch in our calculator i've done a video on how to you know um calculate square roots and cube roots on the gd calculator you check that video okay and i would arrange it i'm trying to arrange a course on the website so everything will be arranged there, okay, curated there for you to just follow through, you know, you sip your tea or coffee and go through these videos, okay? So here, the square root of 9 is 3. Now, the next one is the square root of what? 64. What is the square root of 64? As I said, it's always going to be a number smaller. Okay, smaller number. So we have to look for that number that when we multiply two times, it would give us what, 64. And what is that number? That number is 8. When we multiply 8 two times, it gives us 64. Okay, now what is the square root of 1, 2, 1? Whenever you see this sign, it means you should find the square root of the number. 1, 2, 1 is what? 11. Because when you do 11 times 11, you get 1 to 1. Okay, so this is 11. This is a perfect square. 1 to 1 is a perfect square. Now, what is the square root of 49? The square root of 49 is 7. Because when you do 7 times 7, you get 49. So it is what? 7. Now, look at 57. 57 is not a perfect square. Okay, but you can easily know where it falls. That's why it's always good. Uh, before you get into your exam, try to know the first 12 perfect squares, okay? It's always good you try to know the first 12 perfect squares. I would, um, when I'm curating this video um, on the video course list, I would give a sheet where it shows the perfect squares and the perfect cubes for you to, you know, practice, all right? So, for 57, you can see that uh, 57, after 57 falls between number 49 and 64, right? But it's not up to 64, but it's more than 49. So you should have an idea that the square root of 57 should be 7 point something. Okay, when you punch in your calculator, exactly uh, the, the exact number you would get is 7.549. Okay, now here you have find the square root of 150. This is not a perfect square. When you punch in your calculator, okay, you can say 150 is immediately after 144. You know, 144 is a perfect square, which is 12. Okay, square root of 144 is 12. So you can see 150 is quite a bit like six numbers after 144. So it means that the square root of 150 will be 12 point something. Okay, so your exact figure you would get in your calculator would be 12.24 and several other numbers, okay? Now, here we have number seven. It says, find the square root of everything added here. So we have 19 plus 122, and that will give us 144, which we have done this year. The square root of 144 is 12. Here we have 91 minus 27. That will give us 64. Okay, so here, square root of 64 is what? 8. I'm doing this because you can see questions like this, where there's, they say add two numbers inside. You know, this is under the square root. Not if 19 and 125 were outside here, it's a different operation entirely. But this 19 plus 25, you add them together, then find the square root. Okay, so I'm doing this so you don't get confused when you see this and you see you feel so is you know ambiguous and all that, and you don't understand and you know it frightens you. No, it's still the same thing, just simplify what is in the square root. Now, here you have 
the square root of 36 minus the square root of 81. How do you do this? Just find the square root. Okay, the square root of 36 is 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. Then minus the square root of 81 is 9 because 9 times 9 is 81. So 6 minus 9, that will give us a negative 3. Can you see that? That's how you simplify. Here you have the square root of 9 times the square root of 25. What is the square root of 9? It's 3. And what's the square root of 25? It's 5. So that's times 5. And that would give us 15. Okay? Here you can see this. This in parentheses, square root of 16, then all square. Here. So you find first the square root of 16. And what would that give us? That would give us 4. Then you square. You know, there's a square here. So 4 raised to the power 2, which is what? 4 times 4. And our final answer is 16. Okay? So this four square roots. Now let's look at cube roots. Here you have the cube root of 8. Now, so it's the same logic. Square root, cube roots, the same lo lo logic. So for cube roots, you are looking for a number that you multiply three times. Here, for square roots, a number you multiply two times that gives you 9. For cube roots, a number you multiply two, three times that gives you eight. And that, that is two, two. Because when you do two times two times two, it gives you eight. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. So you're looking for a number you multiply three times that gives you eight. Also here, you're looking for a number you multiply three times that gives you 27. And that is three. Three times three times three gives you 27. So the cube root of 27 is 3. Here, the cube root of 64 is 4. Because when you do 4 times 4 times 4, it gives you 64. So the cube root of 64 is 4. Here, the cube root of 125 is 5. Because when you do 5 times 5 times 5, you get 125. Now, look at this. Okay, it says uh, simplify. The cube root of 216 plus 4 square. Now, what's the cube root of 216? Now, for you not to get confused about cube roots, just look for a smaller number and test when I multiply this smaller number three times. Will it give me this number? Okay. The GED, you always say a question like this. It's some students of mine have, have spotted questions like this and say, oh, I saw a question like this. That's why I'm putting this, this question here. So the cube root of 216 is 6. When you do 6 times 6 times 6, you get 216. Okay? So the cube root of 216 is 6. Then plus 4 square. What is 4 square? 4 square is 4 times 4, which is what? 16. So 6 plus 16. And what would that give us? That would give us what? 22. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this class today and please, if you do, give this video a thumbs up and also share this video with your friends, family and loved ones. Okay, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so you follow me and I let you know when, um, you know, I'll be uploading the course that would, you know, curated for you for the GED math test. All right, and uh, you can check our Facebook group. Um, the summary notes, study guides, free practice questions on the website. And if you require one-on-one -on -one tutoring, contact me. My email will be in the video description box of this video. All right, so thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video. Finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ, for he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the one who is going to lead us to heaven at last. And give us that life, you know, that heavenly life here on earth. Give us that peace that passes all understanding, that calms every storm. Okay, that whichever storm we're going through in our lives, be it financial storms, health challenges, whatever it is, He's the one who can come and calm that troubles in our lives. So please, you know, give it all to Him. He's willing, He can take it. He said, cast all your burdens upon me. Okay? Cast it all upon me. And take off my yoke, for it is light. Okay? He's going to give you that good rest in him and peace in him. Come to him. He's waiting for you. And he's the one who's going to lead us to heaven at last. 
Thank you and see you in our next video. You are destined to win in your forthcoming GED test and also in life.